parents, uh, Leonard and Joanne. They are great individuals in Blakely, Georgia. He is the oldest of five children. Um, he's um, a veteran. He was in the United States Air Force where he went on to honorably serve his country for 20 years. And we find that when he got out of the Air Force, he came home. He came home to Georgia, and that's so important. He didn't think about Florida anymore. Georgia became his home. Darrell has a master's degree in theology from North Carolina College of Theology, and he's the pastor of New Zion Baptist Church and Sea Hope Ministries there in Blakely. I've had the opportunity to visit with him and with Jason there and talk about some of the things that are important and what's going on in Blakely, Georgia. And I know that we have a, another lady that is very important to, to Blakely, Georgia and uh, Early County, and I hope she will make sure that she speaks to uh, Daryl in just a little bit. But I want to tell you just quickly, when Early County was hit by Hurricane Michael, Daryl coordinated and oversaw the utilization of visiting uh, and local Southern Baptist di disaster relief uh, teams. They fed over 1,000 meals a day for three weeks and took care of individuals in the area. And I have the great pleasure to this morning to introduce the Reverend Darrell Alexander, but more than that, I introduce my friend to you this morning. Thank you. Good morning. I'm just so thrilled to be here this morning with you all. Uh, thank you so much so much my friend representative green for the invite and i thank you so much um, represented um, speaker ralston for allowing me to come and share my convictions with you all this morning and i thank you so much everyone that's here in the house i, I, I truly do i thank you thank you for my friends and my family that travel in support of me so i i, I thank you i thank you i thank um, your staff your staff so graciously sent me all the documents and everything that I needed for um, for today. Uh, they gave me the what to expect and what not to expect. But but um, Alicia had told me that um, there was an error on some of the one of the documents that they sent to me. It says that I was supposed to speak for five minutes. She said it was twenty. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> when I w met for the first time Representative Green, I was still in the Air Force. It's over 15 years ago. And <laughs> I was visiting my parents who had just moved to the area, hadn't been there long at all. And as I'm walking in the front door, I see this guy. It looked like somebody or something was chasing him. He had his tail, his shirt tail out. He was drenching, drenching wet. So he came, fell on the porch. And I said, come in, come in, quick. My dad come running out. He's like, what is going on? And this man says, can I have some water? <laughs> that was the first thing he wanted was some water. He gulped down the water. He says, how you doing? I'm Representative Gr Gerald Green, and I don't want your vote. <laughs> <laughs> Every since then, we've been, we've been friends. He was so down to earth, and I just really, really appreciate him. So let me get on with the, the task at hand that I have for today. What I want to impress upon you today, it comes out of Isaiah, um, Isaiah the 43rd chapter. It's in the Old Testament and, and if you don't know you can find some fresh stuff in an old well. Isaiah the 43rd chapter. I'm going to be reading verses 18 through 19 and I'll use the King James Version. 
And it reads, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. Here we have the children of Israel was expecting God to show up like he's shown up before. And God was reminding the children of Israel to remember not how I did it before. Remember not how it was done before. We are so quickly to look at the blessings of before. We're so quickly to look at the, how God had done it before. We, we look at how he, he, he did it with Samson, and we expect that same thing. We look at how he did it with David, and we do expect that same thing. When he shows up with manna, we look for him to do it the same way. When he showed up and parted the Red Sea, we look for him to do it the same way. But the scripture tells us to remember not those former things. God wants us to not allow that old baggage that we carry around. Old baggage for us may be the hurt, the pain, the, the sorrows that, that we've had, the scars. He says, remember not. Perhaps legally speaking, you, you may be hurt partly by the word that, that declares, forget the former things, so that you will probably be positioned to embrace what God is ready to do for you. Um, Paul tells us in, in um, Philippians 3 and 13 that um, his approach was to forget those things that are behind him. My brothers and sisters, anything that would keep you glued to the past, God is telling you this morning to just cut it off. And I know the, quarter, uh, the, the business that, that, that you all are in, a lot of times we look at how things have been done in the past, how things have played out in the past. God is saying he wants to do something new. Don't even consider those things of old. Anything God does, he wants to consider, not to consider those old things. God does, however, ask you to focus on the new. He's doing a new thing. God is not going to recycle or, or resurrect anything old. He's going to do a new thing. New meaning not old, not seen before. That's what he wants to do. No eyes have seen, no ears have heard what God is getting ready to do. A couple of weeks ago, I started my diet, a little overweight. And that dieting is something new for me. So I get up one morning and I boil me some eggs, starting the keto diet, you know, high protein, low carbohydrates. So I got up this morning, Speaker Rawson, and I began to boil my eggs and I boiled my eggs and when I got finished boiling my eggs, what do we have? There's two things we got to have with the boiled eggs salt and pepper. So I began to look for my salt and pepper and I go in the cabinet and I can't find the salt. And I'm looking and I cannot find the salt nowhere. Then I said, well, it's got to be in here. So I began to look for the pepper and I can't find the pepper anywhere. Now at this point, if you're like me, you want to find the things, you, 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 salt and pepper ought to be there. If you're like me, you're getting a little aggravated. Where is the salt and the pepper? So by this time, I, I pull out everything in the cabinet, and I can't not find the salt and the pepper. And now I am aggravated, and my wife is in the back, and I'm wondering, thinking to myself, what kind of a house is this with no salt? 
and pepper. So I'm trying to contain myself before I go back and I ask my wife, where is the salt and the pepper? So I'm, I'm marching back and steadily I'm trying to contain myself about the salt and pepper. And I get back to my wife and she's back there. She's doing her makeup and uh, doing a facial and getting ready. I said, honey. She says, yes. I said, where, where, we, we don't have any salt and pepper. She says, yes, we do. I said, no, we do not. She says, honey, we have salt and pepper. I said, no, we don't. I went and looked in the, in the china cabinet where I looked in the little crystal um, uh, salt shakers, and there's nothing in it. We don't have any salt and pepper. And she just moseyed on up to the kitchen where I had taken out every seasoning out of the cabinet. She had went up in that same cabinet, reached up, and pulled out salt and pepper. And I'm looking, and what is she pulling down? And I look and I see sea salt. <laughs> I wasn't looking for sea salt. I was looking for the, the canister with the, the blue boat on it. She pulls out the pepper. It was the ground pepper. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm looking for the little can of pepper. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is we'll miss what God is doing in our life by holding on to the old things, the old ways, the, the old looks, we will miss it. When God says that he wants to do that new thing, stop looking for that, that old thing. God wants to open up uh, or release new solutions to the problems that you may have been troubling you. New divine connections will spring forth. New doors are open. New relationships will be established. New fellowships, new ministries, new churches, new way of doing business. God wants to do this new thing in your life. And when he says, I do, I do, he says, God says, behold, I do the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end to all things, he says, I do. He's the one that's going to do it, not you. And it's power in his name. He says it's going to spring forth. The Bible declares that the new thing will spring forth. That means that everything that you touch, if you embrace what he's trying to do, it will bloom, it will blossom. It will spring forth. And that's what he's letting us know on today. The time is now. This battle is not for the strongest. Your time is now. Your testimony is springing forth. And since it's the giver of life, we expect Jesus, this in Jesus' mighty name. When he says, I'll make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, You'll begin to get the victory where normal circumstances and situations is impossible. Nobody be able to explain it because it will be beyond human reasoning. A way will be made for you when it seems to be no way. God will begin to reveal himself as the way maker, the solution giver, the way, the wisdom, the understanding. All we have to do is begin to, to grab a hold of, of what God is telling us this day, this time, this season. And stop trying to hold on to the new thing that, that God is doing. I know when I was a kid, I, I, I love to come up and develop my own um, presentations. I knew it, that, that I, I kind of wanted to, to be a preacher or speaker or something. And I would develop slideshows y'all y'all some of y'all know y'all remember the old slides you you put up and you got the microfish someone had microfish and you had the slides well we progressed from the slides and we went into um as i got older powerpoint became um very relevant prevalent my son he he, he he's wasn't just in the ninth grade he took my powerpoint presentation that i'm preparing for my work and he he added some animation and he had helicopters flying in things of that nature 
And now my granddaughter, she, she, she was over the other day and, and she had my phone and she casted um, a presentation on the TV. <laughs> I learned how to cast stuff. What I'm trying to tell you is we gotta, we gotta let go of some of our old ways, our old ideas, our old, and, and embrace the newness, what, what God is bringing forth with us on today. Let it go and let God do what he is calling each and every one of us to do. Can we stand and pray? Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for your word is, is fresh. And it reminds us, oh, Father God, sometimes we are guilty of holding on to our old mindsets, our old way of thinking, our old way of doing business. But today, Father, you, you let us know, Father God, that, that, that it's time to move forward into the newness, into the thing that you're bringing in for us. So, Father, we pray now that, that we'll be able to see and recognize what you're doing for us in our life. We'll be able to, 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 to see what you are doing. So now sensitize our ears so we'll hear you. We'll hear you, Father God. Hear the voice coming from you. We know, Father God, that, that this is how you lead us and guide us to all truths. We pray these things in Jesus' magnificent name. With every heart say amen. 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 Would y'all stand with me as we honor the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. Chair recognizes Chairman Hogan. Mr. Speaker. The chair of the, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> I, I got to tell him who you are. <laughs> that, that'd be hard to do, Mr. Speaker. The chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journal of the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day Mr. Burns, the number 59th moves the following. He establishes the order of business during the first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of House bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of Senate bills and resolutions. Morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 962 by Representative Lumsden of the 12th, Powell of the 32nd, Jones of the 25th, Taylor of the 173rd, and Bentley of the 139th. 
The bill be titled Act to amend Code Section 5551 of the Official Code of George Annotated Relating to Power, Authority, and Duty. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 963 by Reps of Gilliard of the 162nd and Bruce of the 61st. Bill be titled an act to amend Title 30 of the official code of Georgia and Teddy relating to handicapped persons. Health and Human Services. House Bill 964 by Representative Mitchell of the 88th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 4, Title 1 of the official code of Georgia and Teddy relating to holidays and observances. Special Rules. House Bill 965 by Representative Paysmore of the 63rd, Bruce of the 61st. Voting the 62nd Mets of the 55th and Jackson the 64th. Bill be titled an act to amend an act to incorporate the city of South Fulton and Fulton County. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 966 by Representative Perchetta of the 176th. Corporate the 174th. Perkle the 155th. McCall of the 33rd. Ridley the 6th and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 6 of Title 12 of the official code of George Ann Taylor relating to forest resources. Agriculture and Consumer Affairs. House Bill 967 by Representative Smith, the 133rd, Smith, the 134th, Smyrie, 135th, Hughley, the 136th, and Buckner, the 137th. Bill be titled an act to amend an act establishing the Municipal Court of Columbus, Georgia. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 968 by Representative Estration of the 104th, Fleming, the 121st, Burns, the 159th, Williamson, the 115th, Hatchet, the 150th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 3, Chapter 3 of Title 9 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia and Teddy relate to limitations on recovery for deficiencies. Judiciary. House Bill 969 by Representative Registration in the 104th. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 4, Chapter 3 of Title 8 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia and Teddy relating to fair housing. Judiciary. House Bill 970 by Representative Smith in the 133rd, Smyrie 135th, Rich in the 97th, Hatch in the 150th. Buckner, the 137th, and others. The bill being titled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 7, of Title 4080, the Fisher Code of George Ann Taylor, relating to the imposition rate, computation, and exemptions from state income taxes. Ways and Means. House Bill 971 by Representative Gravely, the 67th, Reeves, the 34th, Jackson, the 128th, Holcomb, the 81st, Gull, the 19th, and others. The bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 11 of Title 15, of the Fisher Code of George Ann Taylor, relating to the Juvenile Code. Juvenile Justice. House Bill 972 by Representative Houston of the 170th, England of the 116th, Knight of the 130th, Parsons of the 44th, and Corbett of the 174th. Bill being titled an act to amend Article 5 of Chapter 2 of Title 46 of the official code of George Annotated relating to miscellaneous offenses and penalties. Energy, Utilities, <laughs> and Telecommunications. <coughs> House Bill 973. By Representative Paris in the 142nd, Beverly 143rd, Bennett the 94th, Trammell the 132nd, Smyrie 135th, and others. The bill being titled an act to amend Code Section 141, the official code of Georgia and Tater relating to public and legal holidays. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 974 by Representative Lumston of the 12th, McCall of the 33rd, Watson of the 172nd, Perkle the 155th, Jaspers of the 11th. Bill be titled an act to amend code section 48541, the official code of George Ann Taylor relating to property exemption from ad valorem taxation. Ways and means. House Bill 975 by Representative McCall of the 33rd and Powell of the 32nd. Bill be titled an act to provide a homestead exemption for Madison County ad valorem taxes. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 976 by Representative Tankersley of the 160th, Burns of the 159th, and Parrish of the 158th. The bill being titled an act to create the Bullock County Public Facilities Authority. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 977 by Representative Jones, the 91st, Davis of the 82nd, Carter, the 92nd, Kendrick, the 93rd, and Mitchell, the 88th. The bill being titled an act to amend Code Section 1613-2, the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotator relating to conditional discharge. Judiciary non civil. House Bill 978 by Representative Wen of the 89th, Hughley of the 136th, Cannon of the 58th, Gardner of the 57th, and Hutchinson of the 107th, and others. Bill be titled Act to Amend Code Section 5, Chapter 5 of Title 30 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotated relating to the Disabled Adults and Elder Persons Protection Act. Human Relations and Aging. House Bill 979 by Representative Martin of the 
49th, Jones the 47th, Hatcher the 150th, Sill Cox of the 52nd, Harold the 106th, a bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 5 of Title 48 of the Fisher Code of Georgia annotated relating to ad valorem taxation of property. Ways and means. House Bill 980 by Representative Anola Woods of the 42nd, Stevens the 164th, Walensky the 79th, Henson the 86th, and Carpenter the 4th, a bill being titled an act to amend Code Section Chapter 66 of Title 36 of the Fisher Code of Georgia annotated relating to zoning procedures. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 981 by Representative Mitchell, the 88th. A bill being titled an act to amend titles 16, 20, and 31 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia annotated relating to crimes and offenses. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 982 by Representative Jones, the 167th, and Clark, the 98th. A bill being titled an act to amend Article 7 of Chapter 10 of Title 9 and Article 2 of Chapter 8 of Title 17 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia annotated relating to contingencies relative to civil practice. Rules. House Bill 983 by Representative Williams of the 145th, Hitchens of the 161st, Powell of the 32nd, and Lumsden of the 12th. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 1, and Title 42 of the Official Code of Georgia annotated relating the Sexual Offender Registration Review Board. Judiciary non civil. House Bill 984 by Representative Perchetta of the 176th, Fleming of the 121st, Bodie of the 62nd, Saints of the 180th, McLaren of the 51st, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 10 of Title 17 of the Fisher Code of Georgia annotated the rating the procedure for sentencing and imposition of punishment. Judiciary non civil. House Bill 985 by Representative Irwin of the 28th. Bill be titled an act to amend the act to provide for a new charter for the city of Homer. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 986 by Representative Jackson of the 64th, Baysmore of the 63rd, Bruce of the 61st, and Bodie of the 62nd. The bill will be titled an act to amend Chapter 62 of Title 36 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to development authorities. Governmental Affairs. House Resolution 1215 by Representative Gilliard of the 162nd, Hitchens of the 161st, Oliver of the 82nd, Gordon of the 163rd, Stevens of the 164th, and others. A resolution recognizing Judge Willie J. Lovett Jr. and dedicating a building in his memory. State Properties. House a Resolution 1216 by Representative Gilliard of the 162nd, Hitchens on 161st, Gordon of the 163rd, Stevens on 164th, and Petrie of the 166th. Recognizing Miss Betty Ann DePietro Rappe and rededicating a road on Georgia Ports Authority property in her honor. Transportation. House a Resolution 1217 by Representative Gilliard of the 162nd, Gordon of the 163rd. A resolution, a resolution honoring Mr. Marvin Leon Curtis, Jr., and dedicating a building in his memory. State Properties. House a Resolution 1218 by Resident Houston of the 170th. A resolution honoring the life of Mr. James Edward Giddens and dedicating a road in his memory. Transportation. That completes first readers. Senate Bill 134 by Senator Kirkpatrick of the 32nd, Jackson of the 2nd, Kirk of the 13th, Unterman of the 45th, and Huff Stetler of the 52nd, and others. The bill being titled an act to amend Article 8 of Chapter 12 of Title 50 of the Fisher Code of Georgia Annotator relating to the Georgia Commission on the Holocaust. Governmental Affairs. The Senate Bill 268 by Senator Jackson of the 2nd, Harbison of the 15th. The bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 17 of Title 45 of the Fisher Code of Georgia Annotator relating to notaries public. Defense and Veterans Affairs. Senate Bill 335 by Senator Brass of the 28th, Miller of the 49th, Walker of the 20th, Mullis of the 53rd, Stone of the 23rd, and others. The bill be titled Act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 3 of Title 12 and Chapter 11 of Title 15 and Chapter 5 of Title 49 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotator relating to general provisions regarding parks, historic areas, and memorials. Juvenile Justice. Senate Bill 345 by Senator Kirkpatrick of the 32nd, Tippins of the 37th, Red of the 33rd, and Jordan of the 6th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 26, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to standards, labeling, and adulteration of food. Health and Human Services. Senate Bill 356 by Senator Ligon of the 3rd. A bill being titled an act to amend Part 1 of Article 2, Chapter 8 of Title 12, the Fiscal Code of Georgia annotated relating to general provisions regarding solid waste management. 
natural resources, and environment. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 946 by Representative Knight of the 130th, Hatchet of the 150th, England of the 116th, Stevens of the 164th, Jaspers of the 11th, and others. A bill relating to regulation and licensure of pharmacy benefits managers. House Bill 947 by Representative Knight of the 130th, Hatchet of the 150th, England of the 116th, Newton of the 123rd, Hawkins of the 27th, and others. A bill relating to Medicaid. House Bill 948 by Representative Silcox of the 52nd, Cooper of the 43rd, and Henson of the 86th. A bill relating to the Georgia Commission on the Holocaust, House Bill 949, by Representative Knight of the 130th, Harold of the 106th, Carson of the 46th, Williamson of the 115th, Blackman of the 146th, a bill relating to revenue and taxation. House Bill 950, by Representative Kennard of the 102nd, Kendrick of the 93rd, Bennett of the 94th, Wilson of the 80th, Workheiser of the 157th, and others, a bill relating to review of individual criminal history, record information. House Bill 951, by Representative Kennard of the 102nd, Dreyer of the 59th, Kendrick of the 93rd, McLaurin of the 51st, and Bennett of the 94th, a bill relating to procedure and sentencing and imposition of punishment and probation. House Bill 952, by Representative Cooper of the 43rd, Silcox of the 52nd, Hatchet of the 150th, Knight of the 130th, Wilson of the 80th, a bill relating to pharmacies, House Bill 953, by Representative Rich of the 97th, Williamson of the 115th, Welch of the 110th, Watson of the 172nd, Jones of the 25th, a bill relating to the general authority, duties, and procedure of state purchasing. House Bill 954, by Representative Rich of the 97th, England of the 116th, Campbell of the 171st, Mathiak of the 73rd, Bonner of the 72nd, and others, a bill relating to theft. House Bill 955, by Representative Evstration of the 104th, Cooper of the 43rd, and Oliver of the 82nd, a bill relating to crimes against the person. House Bill 956, by Representative Belton of the 112th, Newton of the 123rd, Nix of the 69th, Williams of the 168th, Prince of the 127th, a bill relating to speech, language, pathologists, and audiologists. House Bill 957 by Representative Jones of the 47th, Jaspers of the 11th, Chokas of the 138th, Nix of the 69th, Setzler of the 35th, a bill relating to education. House Bill 958 by Representative Setzler of the 35th, Rich of the 97th, Widower of the 119th, Gaines of the 117th, a bill relating to children and youth services. House Bill 959 by Representative Meeks of the 178th, Smith of the 133rd, Washburn of the 141st, Smith of the 70th, Workheiser of the 157th, and others, a bill relating to Waste Management, Cost Reimbursement, and Surcharges, House Bill 960 by Representative Hutchinson of the 107th, Moran of the 96th, Wilson of the 80th, Park of the 101st, Wynn of the 89th, and others, a bill relating to offenses involving illegal aliens, House Bill 961 by Representative Park of the 101st, McLaren of the 51st, Holland of the 54th, Rebuchow of the 48th, Moore of the 95th, and others, a bill relating to health. House Resolution 1166 by Representative Prince of the 127th, Fraser of the 126th, Nelson of the 125th, Newton of the 123rd, and Howard of the 124th. Resolution supporting the creation of a state veteran cemetery in Augusta, Richmond County. House Resolution 1167 by Representative Green of the 151st, Donahue of the 30th, Perkle of the 155th, Borkheiser of the 157th, and Lumsden of the 12th. Resolution authorizing the conveyance of certain state-owned real property. House Resolution 1168 by Representative Park of the 101st, Williamson, Williams of the 37th, Couch of the 50th, Moore of the 95th, Hutchinson of the 107th, and others. Resolution creating the House Study Committee on Adverse Childhood Experiences to Improve the Health of Women and Children. House Resolution 1169 by Representative Hutchinson of the 107th, Marin of the 96th, Wilson of the 80th, Park of the 101st, Wynn of the 89th, and others. A resolution encouraging the replacement of the term illegal alien with the term undocumented person in the official code of Georgia annotated. Three second readers. Reports of Standing Committees. The clerk will read. Representative Sharon Cooper, the 43rd District Chairman of the Committee on Health and Human Services, submitted the following report. The Speaker, your Committee on Health and Human Services, is under consideration the following bills of the House and instructed me to report the same back to the House to the following recommendations. House Bill 521, due pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Sharon Cooper, the 43rd District Chairman. Representative Jan Tankersley, the 160th District Chairman of the Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Local, submitted the following report. 
Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Locals had under consideration the following bills of the House and has instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 826 do pass, House Bill 921 do pass, House Bill 923 do pass, House Bill 924 do pass, House Bill 935 do pass, House Bill 944 do pass, House Bill 945 do pass, House Bill 933 do pass. Respectfully submitted Representative Tankersley, the 160th District Chairman. Representative Abstration, the 104th District Chairman of the Committee on Judiciary Non Civil submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Judiciary Non Civils added under consideration the following bills of the House. It has instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 799, do pass. Respectfully submitted Representative Abstration to the 104th District Chairman. Representative Corbett of the 174th District Chairman of the Committee on Motor Vehicles submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Motor Vehicles has had under consideration the following bills of the House. This instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 819 do pass. House Bill 861 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Corbett of the 174th District Chairman. Representative John Carson of the 46th District Chairman of the Committee on Transportation has submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Transportation has had under consideration the following bill of the House. It is instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 808 do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative John Carson of the 46th District Chairman. Representative Brett Harrell of the 160th District Chairman on Committee on Ways and Means submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Ways and Means has had in consideration the following bills the House and the Senate. Is instructed me to report the same back to the House following recommendations. House Bill 378 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 448 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 715 do pass. House Bill 779 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 807 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 846 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 949 do pass. House Bill Senate Bill 144 do pass. Respectfully submitted. Representative Brett Harrell of the 106th District Chairman. That completes the reading of the reports of standing committees. We have a local calendar today. And now we're going on to the local calendar. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills. One bill on the local calendar relates to homestead exemption and requires a recorded two-thirds roll call vote for passage. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills. If there is no objection, we will vote on the local calendar as a whole with a recorded vote. Hearing none, it is so ordered. The clerk will read the local calendar. House Bill 826 by Representative Watson, the 172nd, City of Miggs. House Bill 921 by Representative Bruce, the 61st, City of South Fulton. House Bill 923 by Representative Corbett of the 174th, Clinch County. House Bill 924 by Representative Rogers of the 10th, Habersham County. House Bill 935 by Representative Abstration of the 104th, Gwinnett County. House Bill 944 by Representative Dukes of the 154th, Miller County. House Bill 945 by Representative Dukes of the 154th, Miller County. House Bill 933 by Representative Nix of the 69th, Troop County. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on the local calendar? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bills? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall these bills now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bills on the local calendar will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Do 
If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of the bills on the local calendar. The ayes are 149, the nays are zero. These bills, having received the requisite constitutional majority, are therefore passed. We are going on now to morning orders. Morning orders. Members will have one minute each on morning orders. And the chair recognizes for a morning order, Representative Matthew Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last year, we lost some very special people in Georgia. We lost sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. We lost parents and loved ones. Last year, we lost almost 1,500 Georgians to suicide. It's the 10th leading cause of death in Georgia. And if you look at the uh, one pager that I provided on your desk this morning, you'll see it's actually the second leading cause of death in Georgia for our young adults. But we have great people in this state who are working to turn that around and change that. One of those groups is the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, who is here with us today. Um, some of them are in the gallery, and I'd ask them to stand and be recognized. We thank them. Each year, each year they do the hard work to raise money to change this and turn around these death rates. Last year they raised nearly half a million dollars and were the, the largest chapter uh, in America. We thank them for their great work and the work that they urge us to do. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Dickerson for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today is February the 21st, and we would like to wish Representative Joan Lewis a happy birthday today and pray for his recovery. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Stovall for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today is Georgia Election Officials and Registrars Day here at the State Capitol. And the Registrar's responsibility is to register individuals to vote to keep record of these individuals and to issue absentee ballots. They, we are recognizing them for the vital importance that the elections play with their role in the foundation of any democratic system of governance and also with our new voting machines, the challenges that they will have. Would you please join me in welcoming and acknowledging our elections officials and registrars who are here in the gallery on the right hand side here. Will you all please stand? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Scott for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A moment in black history. Black women in the movement. In April 1960, civil rights leader Ella Baker urged student activists at Shaw University in North Carolina to form an organization based in participatory democracy and grassroots advocacy. The students created the National Violent Coordinated Committee in 1961. SNCC Freedom Riders challenged segregated in interstate bus travel. Ella Baker's activism and mentorship transformed the landscape of the civil rights struggle and exemplified black women's key role in the movement. For years before Rosa Parks' famous arrest launched the Montgomery Bus Boycott, black women bore the daily humiliation of segregation, sexual harassment, and violence from the bus drivers and police. Though leaders like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. became the face of the protest, scholars recognized that the boys Boy Scout, Boy Scout success relied upon the black women who initi initiated and maintained it. Black women like Constance Baker Martler, Diane, Diane Nash, Amelia Boyton Robinson, Marion Wright Elderman, Elaine Jones, Daisy Bates, Satima Clark, Fannie Lou Hamer, and Shirley Chisholm were indispensable activists, civil rights lawyers, and political leaders whose efforts advanced the fight for injustice and equality 
and equality. Before her death in 1986, Ella Baker distributed her strength to her grandmother who suffered brutal violence for resisting enslavement, like Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, and Ida B. Wells, and so many other ancestors, black women of the civil rights were criticized in shaping the resistance to racism and sexism in America, today's moment in black history. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Cannon for a morning order. Good morning, colleagues. For this moment in black history, we're discussing the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. For over seven decades, they have been visiting Atlanta and Georgia, helping to promote the uniqueness of the African American cultural experience and they have been bringing modern dance heritage to more than 25 million people. We ask that you understand the importance of the work they're doing in teaching our children empathy through dance and cultural expression. If you are in Atlanta, please also go and check them out, this moment in black history today. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Hutchinson for a morning order. Good morning, colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'd like to introduce you to 13-year-old Larry. Larry wants to visit Disney World and learn to play basketball and football sometime in the near future. Larry is a fun, neat, loving, caring, and helpful child. He loves watching video games, playing football, and making everyone laugh. Larry is one of the hundreds of children that are, wait, are available for adoption today in Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes <coughs> Representative Clark and Representative Moore for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's very evident there's a lot of, uh, a lot of age and a lot of wisdom in this chamber, uh, but we're here to create something new. Uh, it's called the Georgia Future Caucus, and it's a bipartisan effort to look at issues that affect a younger generation and how we can benefit future Georgians. So, so my colleague and I, um, Colton and I, are, uh, will serve as co-chairs of this caucus and, we're, and we invite anyone to join the caucus, but we are specifically looking for legislators under the age of 45, and, <laughs> and we'll be focusing on issues affecting Georgians in that age group. This is a bipartisan caucus, and we are pleased to be joining more than 900 state legislators in 29 states as a part of the National State Future Caucus Network. There's more information on the flyers on your desk. Again, anyone is invited to join, but we are specifically looking for um, our younger legislators, and that is the group that we will be focusing on issues for. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, colleagues. Chairman Hogan wants to be your uh, speaker at your first meeting. He's concerned about the exclusionary policy to prevent him from joining. We have, we're going on now to invite resolutions. The House will be in order. The clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 937. House Resolution 937 by Representative Howard of the 124th. A resolution recognizing and commending Terry D. Elam upon the grand occasion of his retirement and for other purposes. Chair recognizes Representative Wayne Howard for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I am joined by a dear friend uh, and a, a Georgian that has put in 40 years in the technical school system here in, in, at Augusta Tech in Augusta, Georgia. But 
I think we call it Augusta Technical College now. Uh, and I would like you all to first welcome him and his family here to the, to the Capitol. <laughs> 40 years of service to this state. Uh, we have Mr. Terry Elam, uh, his wife, uh, Patricia, his uh, son and uh, daughter-in-law. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, a daughter. <laughs> I, I married the son and the daughter there. That, that's not the way it goes. <laughs> but we are so happy to have them and this family means a lot to the Augusta and to the area and to the state. And I wanted to invite him and his family here to just have a quick word of his, exp you know, I'll leave it up to him, uh, to Terry. Terry is known for being the one that if you ever sit in a board meeting with him or any kind of meeting, he'll sit back and just wait. Everybody expresses their opinion and Terry will come in and, at the last minute and make a statement and his statement will literally change the minds of everybody uh, from one place to another. And uh, colleagues, I want you to welcome Mr. Terry Elam. Thank you and formally this is my wife of 50 years, Patricia my daughter, Joy, and my son, Brandon. To the speaker, thank you. Uh, running a state from a legislative standpoint, you get 40 days to set the agenda for a year. And then it's people like me who work for the state. I worked 47 years, 23 as a college president. And I can tell you three things kept me in the right mind. First of all, it's integrity. Second, it's looking for truth. And last, always looking for knowledge. Because you didn't wake up every day as smart as you go to sleep the, that afternoon. Hopefully you learn something every day. And as a lifelong learner, my time representing thousands of students, thousands of employees, and working for economic development in the CSRA. We even help South Carolina a little bit every now and then. So I can tell you, um, it was tough getting up at 4.30 this morning, okay. driving up here, when 8 o'clock is now my rise time. <laughs> so I'll end with just a statement my wife gave me for my birthday two weeks ago, I turned one of those magic numbers of zero at the end. She said, you're not, it says, you're not retired. You're just under new management. Thank you.
We are going on now to the rules calendar. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 780. House Bill 780 by Representative Perkle, 155th Green and 151st and others to be entitled to an act to amend code section 50. 1634, the fiscal to George Annotator relating the powers and duties of the State Properties Commission. This bill I refer to the Committee on State Properties. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Representative Perkle to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, uh, HB 780 I have for your consideration. Uh, we often want to just pass bills that provide um, more efficiency in our government and able to save money. This is, this is one of the bills. It's very small, seven word change. Uh, and let me just give you some background. Uh, presently, if you have a new technical school in your district, we have to grant, if Georgia Power is providing the, the power to it, we have to grant them an easement in order to lay the uh, overhead line or dig a trench to provide power to us. Uh, the way our Georgia code presently exists, uh, if we grant an easement to a private entity, we must get an appraisal on the value of that. And annually we have the easement, annual easement uh, conveyance bills uh, from state properties. And uh, there are between 10 and 20 per year. Uh, all of the valuations come back in that $10 range, the value of the easement. Uh, and we are spending $3,000 to get a $10 evaluation. Uh, this bill will allow us to bypass that and allow the state properties to value that. And that's what the bill does, Mr. Speaker. If there's any questions, I'll do my best. You have no questions. Thank you, sir. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee? which was favorable to the passage of the bill. The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 780 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 780. The ayes are 149, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 487. House Bill 487 by Representative Bonner of the 72nd and others to be entitled an act to amend Article 6 of Chapter 3, Title 38 of the Fish Code of Georgia and Teddy relating the Disaster Volunteer Relief Act. This bill having referred to the Committee on Public Safety and Homeland Security. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Representative Bonner to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, colleagues, I rise this morning to present House Bill 487. This amends the Disaster Volunteer Relief Act for Georgia. It extends the same courtesy that we currently provide to state employees that are members of the Red Cross to state employees that are members of the Civil Air Patrol. This would provide uh, a state employee that is also a member of the Civil Air Patrol up to 15 days paid leave uh, in a 12-month period in order to respond to a disaster here in Georgia. Uh, this can only be done uh, upon uh, the name, a named disaster by the governor uh, and at the request of the Civil Air Patrol and in agreement with that employee's department. Um, the other thing this uh, bill does is to rename that act to the Robert Argo Disaster Volunteer Relief Act as a way to honor one of our former colleagues who was very uh, active in the Civil Air Patrol uh, during World War II. Um, Civil Air Patrol provides uh, 
important functions here in the state of Georgia. Uh, the Georgia wing of the Civil Air Patrol is actually one of the largest in the country. They respond uh, during Hurricane Michael with over 152 flight hours. They perform missions such as search and rescue, aerial reconnaissance, and aerial photography. Uh, they are our volunteers, and so they are providing a vital service to the state of Georgia. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I'll stand for any questions. You do have a question if you care to yield. I'll yield. Chair recognizes Representative Rogers to your right for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, will the gentleman yield? I will. Good. Is it not true that this bill has passed a couple of different times in the House and just gotten called up and uh, across the way? That's correct. The bill previously came out of the House but did not make it through the Senate. And is it not also true that uh, the bill, after being named for former Representative Argo, who was a gold uh, congressional uh, medal winner for his uh, service to the Civil Air Patrol in World War II? That is correct. Great. Thank you, sir. It's a great bill. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you. I yield the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 487. The ayes are 157, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Chair recognizes Representative Metz to introduce the doctor of the day. All right, let's go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am so happy to be able to introduce my friend, my constituents, and my health advisor, Dr. Lejeune Oliver. This is my third time introducing Dr. Oliver, and I would just introduce her by saying, my friend, my constituents, and my neighbor in Southwest Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative Metz, for such a kind introduction. Mr. Speaker, to our representatives and all of our distinguished guests, it is certainly my honor and privilege to be with you today. Again, I am Dr. Lejeune Oliver. As a native Georgian, one who's done all of my medical training here in this great state of Georgia at the Medical College of Georgia in residency at Emory University School of Medicine, 
and now working for the Southeast Permanente Medical Group, the largest physician-owned and physician-led group, medical group in Georgia, serving over 300,000 Georgians. It is certainly my privilege and honor to serve as your doctor of the day today. As you continue along in your busy legislative session, make sure you take some time for yourself, eat healthy, get plenty of rest, and keep thriving. Have an awesome Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, if you um, listen up now, if you have pages here today, uh, we're going to start lining them up. If you are not here when your page uh, group is ready to have their photograph, um, they will have it without you. So we'll start lining up now for page photographs and if you have an announcement, uh, be prepared to come down front soon uh, for what What purpose does Chairman Cooper rise? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to make a motion. State your motion. Uh, I would rise and ask that insurance, um, that House Bill 918 be moved from insurance to the Special Committee on Access to Quality Health Care. Both chairmen are in agreement. The lady has moved that uh, House Bill 918 be withdrawn from the Insurance Committee and committed to the Special Committee on Access to Quality Health Care. Clerk will read the caption. House Bill 918 by Representative Cooper, the 43rd, and others to be entitled an act to amend Article 6, Chapter 4, Title 26. The official code of George Annotator relating to pharmacies. On the lady's motion, is there objection? Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so ordered. Clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. Honoring the life and memory of Ronald Ronnie Riggs Smith. Recognizing February 25th, 2020 is after school day at the state capitol. Recognizing commending Atlanta Girls School for 20 years of exceptional education and outstanding academic achievements. Recognizing commending Evanton Blair. Recognizing March 20th, 2020 is STEM Advocacy Day at the State Capitol and commending the Wired Cats Robotics Team. And for other purposes, that completes the reading of the privileged resolutions. Is there any objection to adopting the privileged resolutions? The chair hears none and the resolutions are adopted. We're going on now to announcements. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the House Rules Committee for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We will not have a Rules Committee meeting this afternoon, uh, but we will have one Monday morning at 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock Monday. Rules Committee meeting Monday at 9 a.m. Chair recognizes 
Chairman Darlene Taylor for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Appropriations Transportation Subcommittee, bright and early, 8 o'clock Monday morning, will be meeting in the CAP 132, Appropriations Transportation Subcommittee, 8 a.m. Thank you. That completes our announcements. One final reminder to be up here if you have pages. One opportunity to have your photograph made with them and then we're not gonna go looking for you. Chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move that this House stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Monday, February, February the 24th, 2020. The Majority Leader has moved that this House be adjourned until 10 a.m. Monday, February the 24th, 2020. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes clearly have it, and this House will be adjourned until Monday morning, February 24th at 10 a.m.